Let's head on over to Harbor Freight and I will show you the four items to pick up to get some sweet welds like this. If none of these are on sale, it will put you back just over 200 bucks, but come on, it's Harbor Freight. Every other weekend they got a sale going. I've got the Titanium 125. Now you might be tempted to pick up the Chicago Electric 125. It is well worth the $30 extra to get this due to those couple extra little features, the size and how it actually welds over that Chicago Electric. We've got a 120 volt, so it's nice. You can plug it into the house outlets. Flex core only machine, meaning we don't need gas with this machine, nor are there any gas hookups to even use this machine as a MIG welder. Auto darkening helmet, not the cheap fix shade right next to it. The auto darkening allows you to actually look through, get ready, start the weld, and as soon as it sees the arc from that weld, then it will auto darken, just like in the name, and then you can continue seeing what you're actually welding without hurting your eyes. You're melting two freaking pieces of metal together. Just pick up some welding gloves. You can get a three pack for 10 bucks. No Harbor Freight welder comes with wire anymore. Pick some up, make sure that it is not the solid core. You might be tempted because it's cheaper, but that is for MIG welding. Do not pick up the aluminum. You want some flux core or gasless flux core welding wire. I pick up 0 0.030 size. It gets me through all my projects. As mentioned before, it does have a regular 120 volt plug, meaning you can plug it into any house outlet. Uh, hopefully that goes without saying, you probably should do it in your garage with the garage door open or outside. I use an extension cord. Uh, just make sure if you do that it's a thicker one, no 16 gauge that won't run the machine. Uh, I use 10 gauge, runs it great. And the question I get asked all the time, do I really need that 20 amp breaker to run it on? Yes, if you are going to be up at the max settings. If not, keep the settings at the middle or down below and you can run it on a 15 amp breaker. We need to run the wire through the gun. So yes, do plug the machine in now. But if you're up here on a metal table, let's take off the ground clamp because if we were to be pulling the trigger and we touch the table, you're gonna close that loop and create an arc. Ensure the wire diameter showing on the feed roller matches the wire size. While holding wire securely, cut the end. Do not let go. Trust me, you'll lose half your spool. Don't forget to turn it on. And I actually like taking off the contact tip just to make sure that it does flow out freely. Then you will press either the cold feed switch or you can pull the trigger. Once the wire comes out the end, you can put the contact tip back on and then the nozzle. And this is a true flux core nozzle, which I love about the titanium welders. Check, 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 double check. Discount, double check, we're done. This is actually a two scale gauge. So if you aren't sure how thick your materials, well, put it up there. Yes, it's hard to get anything other than a coupon up there, but it does get you in the ballpark. If you go to weld and you pull the trigger and the wire's coming out like this, but you're getting nothing, the number one thing to check is that your ground clamp is connected either to the metal table if you've got one or directly to the workpiece itself. This isn't too high of amperage, so I'm gonna turn the shade on my welding helmet to about 10. We're gonna be going straight down and then I'm actually gonna clock it back and drag this entire weld right here. Also keeping the stick out about half of an inch. That is the amount of wire sticking out from the contact tip. First up is some 16 gauge plates and I'm going straight off the suggested settings and so it is C and four. This is the actual speed that I'm moving. Now with this lap joint on thinner material, if you start out and are just burning right through the material, then turn the settings down or you can move faster. If you start welding and it is way too bright, make sure that you crank up that shade. So I did up my amperage, so now I'm gonna go to about 12. Now switching over to the T-joint on some eighth inch coupons. Already mentioned, don't forget to turn up that shade because we are going to be upping the amperage. 
You may notice that I'm traveling a bit slower, and that is because T-joints require a bit more material or wire to actually be put in and filled that weld, and more heat. So you'll notice I am going slower, and I'm kind of doing some just some circular motions. This is sometimes a pattern. It doesn't really matter. If you just are practicing, you can just go straight up with a line, and it will turn out just great. Now for this last weld, I'm pulling out the brick. Why do you ask? And that's just to show that you don't need a welding table or a fixture table or anything to get good weld. For many years, I was just straight up on my garage floor. And sometimes I would use bricks to actually even hold up the pieces in place. Keep an eye out on that stick out and get out there and start practicing. When done, don't freak out with how dirty they look. That's from all of that smoke, spatter, dust that you get with flux core. No way around it. But a lot of passes with a wire brush or a quick pass with a wire wheel will clean that right up. 200 bucks and you get these welds? 